Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to multiply two binary numbers using Booth's algorithm. Now there are multiple multiplication algorithms that we can use, but Booth's algorithm is by far the most efficient in this class because it avoids unnecessary adds and subtractions. Now since these are both 4-bit numbers, that we know that our product register is going to be 8 bits wide, so your product register is always going to be twice the width of your larger number. And in this class, the only numbers that you'll encounter uh, will be numbers that are of the same width, so you can always just double one of the widths. So just say A is 4 bits wide, so our product register is going to be 8 bits. And one other thing that we have to consider before we do our setup uh, is that we're going to be adding and subtracting this multiple can to our product register, or to the left half of the product register. So the first step that we need to do is we need to represent the inverse of B in 2's complement. So B is 7, and we have 4 bits, so we need to go ahead and represent negative 7. So to do that, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say negative b, and you all know how to represent uh, a negative number in 2's complement. You invert all the bits and then add 1. So we're going to get uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, but then it's going to be plus 1. So this is negative 7 in 2's complement. And now that we have that out of the way, uh, the next thing that we need to do is set up a table. So if you go into your slides, uh, one of the things that you'll notice is that Booth's algorithm has a very specific table with certain columns. There's an iteration column, uh, which is the current level that you've shifted the product register. Then there's a step column, uh, a product column, and uh, sometimes you can add a last column, which is the last bit that you've shifted out of the register. And then there's a description column for a text-based description of what we're doing. So uh, our product register is going to be 8 bits wide. Uh, and then, so iteration and step uh, leave a little bit of space, but then product register, make sure you have space for 8 bits. Uh, and then last is going to be 1 bit. And then our description. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out these headers real quick. Okay, so we have our table. Um, we have iteration, step, product, and description. So the first step of Booth's algorithm, and you'll see on your slides, uh, is the initialization step. So that's going to be iteration 0, because we haven't really started yet, and also step 0. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to fill in uh, half of our product register with zeros. So I'm going to go 0, 0, 0, 0. And then we're going to fill in the other half of the product register with our multiplier. So we're going to get 0, 1, 0, 0. And then we have another column, which is sort of a column, but it's really just a single bit that stores the last value that was shifted out of the product register. So it's going to be initialized with a 0. And I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses around here to indicate that these two are grouped together because when we're doing our, um, our algorithm, we're going to be comparing these two values. So there's going to be a special action that we take when these are both zeros or both ones. And there's going to be, uh, we're going to do a subtraction uh, when one of them is, uh, when, when the sequence is one zero and in addition when the sequence is zero one. And then for description, we're just going to write initialize. Okay, so on to our first iteration. So our iteration is going to be 1. And our step, if you look on the slide right before the Booth's algorithm example, uh, our step is going to be 1.00. And we call it 1.00 because that's the sequence uh, indicated here. And uh, real quick, something I forgot is that we're going to underline our multiplier so that we can keep track of it. Because as we shift to the right, we're going to be losing bits of our multiplier. Until we and then at the end we'll finally shift off this last zero and then we'll be done. So that'll take four iterations because it takes four shifts to get the multiplier off. So back to our step. Uh, so our step is 1.00 and that means that no action is taken. Whenever these two are the same, whenever the, the rightmost bit of the product register and the last bit are the same, we do nothing. So all we're going to do is go to step two. And I could rewrite this and copy it, but you can just leave it blank we're going to shift. So I'm going to go ahead and shift in a zero from the left. So zero, 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 one, zero, zero. So now we've taken this value and just shifted it over one. And this register only contains one one, so it's, you can see this one is moved over. And I'm going to go ahead and re-underline the multiplier again so we don't lose it. And as you can see, every iteration, this little underline is going to get more and more narrow as we shift off stuff. So we're done with iteration 1, and we shift for every single iteration. For some iterations, we take no action as far as adding or subtracting, but in every single iteration we shift, which is why Booth's algorithm is going to take exactly four iterations.
Okay, so on to iteration two. Iteration two is going to be very similar to iteration one because we have the same sequence of zeros here. So I'm going to go ahead and write step 1.00, uh, and I'm going to write no action because we tested, and since both of these bits are the same, we're not going to do anything. Uh, so this is just going to be copied here. And then for iteration two, step two, we're just going to shift. So I'll go ahead and shift in another zero. I'll underline, I'll underline my product register, or my multiplier, rather. So on the next iteration, this one is going to be in our last bit. So all that this bit is storing is whatever was shifted over this way. So we shifted over the zero into here. And then for uh, this step, we shifted this zero into our last bit. And then when we get to our next step, we're going to be shifting this one into our last bit. And another thing worth noting is that when we shift zeros onto the left from here, that's only because our most significant bit was a zero. So when we do our shift here, and this moves over there, we shift on a zero. But if this had been a one, then we would have shifted on a one. And the reason for that is because we want to preserve the sign of our product register, because our product register is represented in two's complement. So if we had a one here, when we shift to the right, we want to shift on another one so that we don't make the value positive by adding a zero to the beginning, because our sign bit, if it's zero, that means that our number is positive which wouldn't be true if I had a 1 at the beginning. All right, so iteration 3. I'm going to go ahead and write 3 here. And our step now is going to be 1.10, because now we have a 1, 0 here. Uh, so this is going to be a subtraction. And the way that we subtract, since we don't usually line up two numbers in binary and then do a subtraction by hand like we can with decimal, uh, what we're going to do is instead we're going to add our negative multiple hand. So our multiple hand is this value, and here's where we converted it to two's complement earlier in the video. And what we're adding to is the left half of the product register. So we're always going to add to these four bits over here. So when we add negative b, it's the same as subtracting b. So we're going to do a subtraction. So I'm just going to go ahead and add 1001 zero, zero, one to this value, which is easy because they're all zeros. So it's just going to be 1001. Zero, zero, one. And then I'm just going to copy everything over here in the same way. And underline our multiplier. And that's it for our subtraction. So now we have to do iteration 3, step 2, which is a shift. And so now we have a 1 in our product register. So when I shift, I have to shift in a 1 instead of a 0. So I'm going to rewrite this. And I'm going to underline. Uh, our multiplier. So now we're down to our last bit. And then we're going to move on to iteration 4. And our step now is going to be 1.01 .01 because we have a 0, 1 here, which means that we're going to add. So we do a subtract when we encounter a 1, 0, and we do an add when we encounter a 0, 1. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add our multiplicand. So I'm going to take the value up here. You can't see it, but it's 0, 1, 1, 1. Uh, so I'll go ahead and rewrite that up here equals uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2. We're going to take this value and add it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and write it really tiny right here so I can keep track of it myself. And then we're just going to add. So we'll do 1, 1, and then a 0, carry the 1, and then a 0. And our carryout is 1, but for Booth's algorithm, we can just safely discard carryout. So uh, we got 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1 here, but we don't have any more room in our product register to add that 1. Uh, so just ignore it, and you'll still get the right answer. And then we're going to go ahead and, and uh, we're going to copy the rest of the product register as usual. So zero one. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to draw this line again so we remember our division. And uh, then on to step two, which is just another shift. So we shift every single time. And let me go ahead and write add here too because I forgot that earlier. Shift. And I'm going to shift on a zero this time because now this is a zero. Zero 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 one. Uh, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. And uh, now our product register is gone, and our, uh, our, our, sorry, our multiplier has been shifted out entirely, and we're at iteration 4, step 2. So once you get to iteration 4, that's the same number of bits as uh, the largest of the multiplier and multiplicand. So once you get to your number of bits, step 2, and you've shifted, this is going to be your result. So when we're multiplying two 4-bit numbers, our result is going to be stored in 8 bits. 
uh, because usually if you multiply two 4-bit numbers, the result is going to need more space than 4 bits. So we can verify that this is 28 because we're multiplying, uh, you can't see the, the values up here, but we're multiplying 7 times 4. So let's go ahead and check this. So this is going to be uh, 16 plus 8 plus 4, uh, which is 28. And we're done.